are quite good. Attack warning. Attack warning. Attack warning. Attack warning. Is it for real? Attack warnings for bloody real. Live from Colorado Springs, the Drop Culture Podcast. Want to confirm, is this an exercise? Roger, copy. This is not an exercise. Come on, quick, get down! One, two, three! Welcome to the Dropped Culture Podcast Quick Cast. <laughs> Dropped Culture Podcast, greatest podcast in Colorado. Wow. Hands better than, down. Dude, that's even better than when we were the best in Colorado Springs. No, no, best in Colorado. That's awesome. Aim high. Yeah. Aim for the stars. <laughs> Aim for the stars, right? You're gonna you're gonna end up in space. Yes. <laughs> Worst case scenario, you hit the moon. <gasps> <laughs> Take the leap. <laughs> Come on, guy. <laughs> no, welcome back to our shit show of a show. Uh, <laughs> you've come to the quick cast. You've and come you to the quick should cast. expect nothing less than a shit show. Then uh, an absolute rock and good shit show time. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> come hang out with us. <laughs> Tell all your friends about us. So, uh, Dan, what's been up in the world with you? Well, you know, um, hmm, serious, <laughs> real serious stuff. Can you tell me about your last? Um, 14 days <laughs> my last 14 days um <laughs> where were you <laughs> where wasn't i um all over uh you know the western hemisphere <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> all over the place for sure um we won't get into that that's yeah. that's over yeah. until tomorrow or tuesday rather wah, wah, wah. <laughs> anyways but uh yeah i've watched some movies and stuff yeah, yeah no, there's huh. been a lot of movies a lot of tvs a lot of announcements since you know last time we talked for sure been a shitload yeah. of really bad choices <laughs> <laughs> of, of, of questionable choices at the very best <laughs> i mean hollywood needs to uh relax <laughs> it's, it's it's not the cash cow it once was Facts. Invest in Vegas. <laughs> Bring Hollywood to Las Vegas. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. But we had San Diego Comic Con. We had um, the D23. So Disney's deal. Um, That's all Comic Con is about now, right? Is what? Disney? No. DC had some stuff. Mm. Like Creature Commandos is coming out. I didn't see much. Yeah, the trailer's to. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, a lot of Waller, a lot of Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, or the Bride as they call her. I need to check it out. Why yeah. the fuck haven't I? I don't know. I've seen it. Well, because you know, you have other things to do. Me too. I just happened to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? What I I didn't watch the Fantastic Four one. There was a bootleg, you know. Oh, I haven't seen it on that. The yeah. It was like a first look at, you know. Yeah. So there's probably more effects they're going to add to it or something. Yeah, yeah, I don't even care. I mean, I will, I'll watch Fantastic Four, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, it's it's already, you know, I'm not fanboying that shit in a, in a shitty way. I want to give it a chance, of course. I think Fantastic Four is a wonderful franchise or a wonderful team to introduce into the 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 fucking marvel universe sure just in movies in a in a in a good way right without throwing shit at it which that's what they're doing they're just they're they're holding that property so high and and pumping so much money into what pedro pascal yeah pretty much <laughs> um everybody and i'm chosen. not against pedro pascal i'm mm-hmm. not against any of the choices but um i think it's interesting i mean it's very here's the thing is all of it seems very limited to me right and what I mean by that is it's in an alternate universe. Yeah. We know this, right? And we also know that Secret Wars is going to happen. All in like the next four years, whatever it is, right? So that makes me not think much about 
this Fantastic Four. Yeah. Are they going to be the Fantastic Four after that? Who knows? Right. You know what I mean? Are they going to reboot until they find something that works? Well, I mean, I think it makes it sense to bring everything that they want to bring in from anywhere else together. Yeah. Um, I think it, like, if I was just going to keep an MCU canon, like, not not comic book canon necessarily, but MCU canon, they did have a um, comment in the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness where he's like, didn't you guys chart in the 60s? Yeah. So there's knowledge of it, right? Mm-hmm. But maybe they, like, in the 60s, like, blasted off to another dimension and were stuck there or something. Right. You know what I mean? Or right. trying to get somewhere, they're just going through the universe. Who the fuck knows? Like, uh, Swiss Family, Rob, not... Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 E- exactly. And, um, lost in space. Lost in space. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that that would be cool. Yeah. And maybe that... I'm not saying they... Maybe they're not doing that, but it seems like they're doing it as an alternate reality, which is also fine, but know that... Who knows still, like after Secret Wars, none of none of the stuff that matter goes on up to Secret Wars is going to matter in the end. You know what I mean? Because that'll be the end of everything. That'll be the one new li- um, one new lineage coming out. You know what I mean? One one sacred timeline, if you will. Yeah. You know? Well. That's what I assume they're going to try to do. Yeah. But to make money. Yeah. And, and younger people, yeah, and they've they've you know? opened the door for a couple of new characters um, to really kind of get in there. But the really the main thing that I think that they have opened everything to is the idea of mutants being over there and having a variation of so many different kinds of mutants. Sure, which that's a sandbox that you would love to play in. You know, that's yeah. a that's a place where you want. What be. Marvel tried to do in the comics with Inhumans for a long time right. when they didn't own the rights to the mutants for the TV shows and and, and then movies. What do we got? I mean, we we got something that yeah was probably done well. I didn't watch it. Um, what, what's that? The Inhumans. Oh no, I meant like in the comics they did that. In the Inhumans TV show was watchable. <laughs> Like, I, I think I didn't hate it as much as everybody else hated it, but it wasn't great either. But think about how now actors can be interchangeable in the roles that they've already played True. in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, like in Deadpool. Spoiler alerts, by the way. If right. you haven't seen Deadpool and Wolverine, we'll probably talk about that yeah. sometime on this show. There were so many people that had played different characters throughout the years on all these extra movies, you know, that never quite fit. Yeah. And bringing them back, you know, having uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness give us an alternate reality version of everybody, but including Professor X, right? Broke, you know, broke open everything. So it's like we can do this, and it's and people are receptive. Of course, we're going to be fucking receptive. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you know. I mean, if you really look at it, you're like, damn. Well, it, it was just like Deadpool and Wolverine being just like that, but. Look at the numbers that just like X Men ninety six did. Yeah, you know what I mean. Or ninety seven. That was an ninety seven, right? Yeah, yeah. X Men ninety seven. Ninety six was the actual last real season, right? Like and it was that. it was wonderful. It was that a was great good. Show. It was I, good. I liked that show. I did too. And what they did now with the X Men, they're just like Channing, Channing Channing Tatum being Gambit. Yeah. I thought that was so funny how he said, like, I feel like I was born in the void. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like, yeah. he was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know where I come from. But then at They the, called me Gambit. Yeah, but at the, yeah, <laughs> at the very end, or they you just want him, them to and they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they show him go back to a, to a timeline and it starts yeah. like, increasing. So I was like, holy shit. Well, they, they do mention that, that they saved all the, those people, right? Yeah. yeah. And so hopefully that would be really cool. Why not? Yeah. You know? Just like seeing John Krasinski as fucking Mr. Fantastic. That was that was what the only thing we're gonna get because they're always gonna place somebody else in that role until they find the until they relent. I, I Channing Tatum's a little older than when he tried to originally get all that started. So there was right. like something weird about the neck and the face, and it's just because his face is fuller now. I think he's a bigger guy. Yeah. Well, and Gambit's always kind of gaunt. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, that's what I was skinny, thinking too. You know, not skinny, but I mean he's cut, but yeah. he's thin. Yeah. But yeah. like, who would you choose? Who do you? Oh, think I don't now? know. Yeah. Because I was thinking about that too. Yeah. I was like, you know, I mean, it's just it didn't look right with with the way that he looked. Yeah. 
Nothing but, on him, I'm no, sure. No, no, no. But he's it's look better than I would have in it. Yeah, I'm sure. It's not the representation of the character that is Gambit. Yeah. When you think of Gambit, you see that yeah, tall, lanky, but very agile person. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I would want him to be able to do the accent. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the big thing too. Like, and not that he did a terrible job. But like I would want, I would yeah. want it to be a little better than his maybe. Well, it's just like <laughs> Taylor Hitch did it in uh, Wolverine Origins. Yeah, X Men Origins Wolverine. And and they they did um, they did really good with that character. But it just seemed like it was again kind of just thrown in there. Yeah, it wasn't really an appearance. Yeah. Yeah, like there was some cool stuff that he did, like for a moment. Yeah, that was and then it. he was gone. Yeah, <laughs> and then he's like, "I'm flying over." I feel bad for that dude because he started two huge fucking movies like back to back, and they all bombed. Oh, really? What um, was the other one? John Carter. Oh, that's that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Which John Carter was not a bad movie. Never seen it. You need to watch it. Yeah, you should. Um, it's a Disney movie through and through. Yeah. Um, the Disney formula is easily spotted within the first five minutes of most movies. Yes, a hundred percent. I will say the Deadpool seemed watered down, um, in a way that we didn't have the same kind of free spirit, you know, as the, um, first two movies with dialogue and things like that. Mm-hmm. It just kind of, it felt like that to me. Oh shit, who's calling? Is that net zero? You know what? Pick it up. Oh, what the fuck just happened? Um <laughs> Yahoo I don't know. I don't know. I thought they were able to push it quite a bit. Yeah. More than like you would expect for a Disney production. Like I don't know. I felt like obviously there were some things they wanted to say about certain things, you know what I mean? Who was and Wade from, Yeah, who was Wade Wilson in this one? Who was Wade Wilson? Well, I mean, but like his character seemed a little like he was a depressed Deadpool. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, he was going through a thing, dude. But he was a Deadpool, Deadpool from like um, alternate universe 10,006 or some shit, right? No, the one we followed? No, I don't yeah. believe so. I think he was the Deadpool from 2 and 1. I don't remember. Yeah, I'm, 100, I'm not 100%, but I'd say 99.9% sure. Yeah. Yeah. But still... It to me it just seemed it it didn't have the same. It was still funny. It was still fucking sure. great. It was still cool as shit. I think he had a lot of toys to play with. So, I mean, he had a lot of character growth. I think in the first two movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this one, you, you it was kind of horn uh, shoehorned in the character growth, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. It was that was definitely a fan service movie. You oh know yeah, one hundred percent. And the comic accurate um, Wolverine in the height, the, the little guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is perfect. Yes. <laughs> I you know my wife was like, why did they? Why was he little? I was like, that's how big he's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. She was like, no way. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> and look at Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> Huge jacked man. <laughs> and 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 he did a fucking cool fucking wolverine the worst For wolverine sure. yeah you know? yeah i thought that was gonna they were gonna make it old man logan wolverine where yeah. he killed all of them yeah because of mysterio that would have been cool yeah. but they were just like oh he was just drunk <laughs> <laughs> he was drunk walking home yeah yeah, th- this first dude. of all how much if you're wolverine with your fucking healing factor like his he's drunk for a minute like I, I remember that in the comics, yeah, that, like yeah. you know, like you could get drunk, but it would not last very long. It was like quick. Yeah, you know, like whenever you drink the whole fucking bottle. Yeah, and he just woke up because in, <laughs> in his suit and was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> that Honda Odyssey scene was good. The fight scene that was fucking badass. It was just so brutal. Him kicking him out the windshield, but Wolverine instead of just diving through, just like. I don't know, runs into the fucking front to deploy the airbags to pop him back. He's got an adamantium skeleton, yeah, man. Let's yes. go. That's like, I, I I don't know. I've never seen anything like that in like movies, using those objects like that, like they would in the comics. That's what is the amazing part of it, you know? 
Uh, cavalry. Oh my god! <laughs> Come on, that was badass. That yeah, was badass. You know? And I loved like the little jokes too. Like we're gonna treat you way better than those guys down the road. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <Isn> <laughs> Eddie just fucking knocks him into fucking oh. next month. Hell yeah! Yeah. Oh, j- just like whenever. Um, oh shit. When was, there was the Age of Apocalypse. Yes, Wolverine. yes, with only one hand yeah. in the bone claws and shit. Yeah. They had Patch, they had Old Man Logan. Yeah. Um, they had fucking the John Byrne. Um, the with the uh the fucking where they did the classic cover showing. Oh yeah, the, with the, the Hulk. Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said this in almost the same thing that Hiddleston said. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. In right, until it gets knocked into it. Yeah. <laughs> That was cool. That was badass. Yeah. Like, especially if, if you were a comic fan, I'm sure, seeing that piece, you know, you get, with mean, the reflection of the just, Hulk and the... Yeah, it was just a reflection in that shiny part of it. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> but, and then, and then, you know, since I watched Loki and everything, I remember the void and everything. Sure, I mean, it was cool. Curse. Yeah. That's what I said. Sure, curse you did. Mm-hmm. It, it would have been cool to see Mobius, but didn't belong in the store no um and then what is it b15 or b11 or whatnot yeah it was cool to see a character from there yeah in yeah. the tva and she's a cool character it. just because i don't remember her number um, yeah but yeah, yeah b15 b16 b something yeah. yeah so but we know Lo- we know loki's kind of in charge of everything yeah yeah he's like but the- i don't think he's like in charge like having conversations with people about it no He's just like I am, like the god of. He's learning everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's living, living he's, through everybody. Yeah, yeah, which is crazy. He's the god of stories. <laughs> yeah, and then the the big bad in this too, um, uh, Cassandra. That girl did a good job too. Yeah. I don't know her at all, but she was in The Crown, and apparently yeah. people liked her a lot. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. don't remember. I think her she at played all. like Princess Di or something Probably. in that show. Yeah. But yeah, I thought she did a good job. I liked I liked the uh to let her telepathy only works with like by touching people. Yeah. That was like putting her that was creepy too, the oh, fingers shit. in the head. I was like, Yeah, let's go. Just moving the mask and mm-hmm. shit too, and it's just like oh. He's like, That's so fucking weird. <laughs> and and then like pushing Wolverine down into the fucking dirt, just yeah. like with nothing. Yeah. Uh, she was pretty fucking badass. Yeah, yeah. Lady Deathstrike was over there too. Tyler Maine. Yes. The, the original Sabretooth from the 2000, I think X1 and 2, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They they did a samurai. They did a fucking seven samurai, samurai fucking, you know, like a like they were facing off to fucking fight and he just fucking one slice. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz he said that in in like one of the movies. How about if I He's like, "You know you can't kill me." And he's like, "Well, let me try to cut off your fucking head and we'll see if you live live through that. You know? So and then he fucking cuts his head. Then you get Toad, Pyro. Yeah. Fucking Pyro had a big part, really. Yeah. 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 Kind of gave him a little bit more lines than the lame shit that he had in X2, you know. He was just kinda like, oh. Chris Evans part was cool. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna say it. He's gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> Ripping his skin off and they're like, Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of a here know my power level kind of a yes. moment, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not fucking around. Like, yeah, I'm not like a villain that's just going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just like frap. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <You're> shit! Pudding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're like we have we we haven't seen a Wolverine here in a long time. They're very rare. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool to see. It was like Land of the Lost. You know, yeah, yeah. It it totally <laughs> reminds me of that shit. Sure. The, all the 20th Century Fox logo and shit, just yeah. like one in in the Loki, where they were showing the underground and showing like little Loki and shit. Yeah, yeah. Alligator Loki. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just weird. Throg. Shit. Throg was in there. Yeah. In the Loki show. And it was cool because they because yeah. that same creature was coming after him. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, shit. It was a good movie. Goliath. Yeah. Yeah. It was one hell of a fucking funny movie. Though. Yeah, it was, it was definitely uh, chuckles galore, if you will. Yes, a lot of good action too. That's Deadpool four, by the way. Deadpool four, chuckles galore. Chuckles galore. <laughs> <laughs> Get at me, Mister Reynolds. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, good movie. Um, I want to watch it again before I like have a 
because I'll be honest, like, I think I went into it, even though I hadn't seen a lot of anything, right? The only thing I knew for sure was that Hugh Jackman was in it, Ryan Reynolds was in it, and that for some reason I knew Jennifer Garner was going to be in it. That was pretty much it. Yeah. Because I avoided everything. (laughs) Yeah. You know, which is a pain in the ass when you have a podcast about stuff. Yeah, when you're researching <laughs> shit and everything comes up, like, hey, yeah, Deadpool, like, get out of here, get out of here. <laughs> do, 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 God damn. But, but I had a, I think I had it in my head that, like, at the end of it, it would change something. Yeah. And I don't really feel that it did, necessarily. It didn't change, it just included. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, let's include this. And they miss out because there was no fucking Ghost Rider. Um, there was no Dolph Lundgren Punisher. Yeah. There was no well, do, fucking I think you have to JD stop Salinger. at some point because otherwise you're going to make that stupid ass Flash movie. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So it's cool. Like, don't get me wrong. I would have loved to seen even Nicolas Cage as Johnny Blaze. Perfect. I loved, I would have loved to seen him like out in that desert scene somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Burning through the night sky. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's, they had the fantastic on you too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was cool. I actually yeah. dug that. Um, we didn't get any daredevil. Nope. I think Cavill could have pulled him over for just a little, Hey, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> just get, let's just see one daredevil scene. Yeah. Like you look like you're training with stick, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fucking be wearing rags and everybody just knows you're blind. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, ben. <laughs> ah, that would that would be a cool look for a daredevil in a wasteland like that. Oh yeah! And all he does is he just puts black soot on his eyes so you uh-huh. can't see him. You know what I mean? What was the um, sixteen oh two? Oh shit! Did you remember that? Like, was a mini series of comics, and it was like all kind of rearranged. Yeah. Um, but there was a daredevil in that Matt Murdock, but he had he just wore a blindfold, a red blindfold. I was like, that's perfect. That's all you need, dude. Right. Well, that's what he wore. Yeah. A couple of first times he met Electra. Yeah. He was like, oh, I need to put a jacket around my head. Make it look like a bandana. (laughs) Really quick. Holy (sighs) shit. (laughs) Dude. That's good. (laughs) Origami, I guess, man. (laughs) You are the master. That would be a fucking hell of a show. That would be a really Mm. cool, like. um... I want to see. Daredevil fight show enough in his game. Oh <laughs> shit! Like he just show show enough. He just shows up at the mm. wrong fucking discotheque, <laughs> yeah. you know. And then like show enough's there. He's like, I've always wanted to take on the devil of Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, pussy. <laughs> Who's the baddest? <laughs> They're like, show enough. <laughs> And it's just a bunch of like you got the glow, the glow, you know. <laughs> Bruce Leroy's like just watching. He's like, I like Daredevil too. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. Oh, uh, um. Robert Downey Jr. gonna play Doctor Doom. How you feel about that? Same question. Why? Yeah. I don't There's just no it. need for it. Really. If if it's all about the money, I mean, let him do another fucking Iron Man. Just why? Why does yeah. he need? It disgusts me that much. <laughs> it stops me in mid sentence. No, um, it just there's so many other people that could probably do a fantastic job at it. I'm just kind of disappointed in what I'm seeing so far with the Fantastic Four. And why? Yeah, <laughs> it's just a question of why. I agree. I agree. Why? Why? Seems why? like weird decisions. Like. That what I have to assume is that it's like, you know, again, the MCU started with Stark. He saved it, sacrificing himself, and now he's going to be the one to destroy it or hone it into something, transform it. You know what I mean? Right. Secret War style, I'm assuming they're going by the more recent Secret Wars comic yeah. book. It would make sense since they're bringing Doom in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but... uh yeah, dude. I don't, I don't. So it's to me, it almost makes it have to be a Stark variant and not Victor Von Doom. But I do remember he said something about playing Victor, and that makes maybe 
but you're telling me like every person in the theater is not going to like if he if they're paying him as much money as they're paying him they want to see his face right 100 percent. but but the one of the very first things that came out of his mouth after he took off the mask mm-hmm. these are available for sale <laughs> no shit <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> they're available for sale now you know what i mean so it's like uh, okay you know right. are you going to <laughs> are you going to like feed a third world country or some shit with well, your profits this yeah, time yeah well what i was going to say is i think that makes it have to be a stark variant yes that ends everything and that ends this current version of the mcu yeah and i see the cap end i see like this is the movie i would make if my boss said hey you have to hire robert downey jr to play dr doom i'd be like oh oh okay and I then refuse. this is what I would have to do. Well, you gotta gotta yeah. feed your kids, or yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah, I'd, I'd refuse. I'd be like, I'm an artist. God I'm an artist. I'm an artist. <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Believe me. Uh, so, Holly, yeah, yeah, Hollywood yeah. seems like it, it. It really does. It rises and falls according to somebody that has no business shaping the industry controlling the industry agreed you know um so they throw a million fucking things at the wall and then one sticks and then everybody's like we've got to do that one thing because it just worked yeah unfortunately like uh, like, we're in remake world right now you and i and my wife actually were talking about that outside earlier um it's like every time i turn around dude and it's not even like niche things like i could see you remaking something that's super niche you know, like had a great premise, but maybe didn't have a good, you know. Yeah, didn't have a good budget, start. Didn't yeah, have something. whatever. Yeah, that's cool. There's no problem with that. Yeah, but you're gonna remake Labyrinth? Mm, Fuck off! No, you that's... remind me of the babe. <laughs> what babe? The babe with the power. <laughs> the power of what? Voodoo. Who do you do? What remind me of the babe? I saw my <laughs> baby. <laughs> Crying hard <laughs> as babe could cry. I have to sing it every time. What could I do? What could I do? Um. <laughs> Anyways. Well. Sorry for that digression. Okay. So to put it into perspective, recently for me, I watched a movie that I loved as a kid. Mm-hmm. Fucking absolutely like what would watch it several times and it is not a great movie but it is not a bad movie it's a fun sure. movie that's back to the beach oh jesus <laughs> no shit dude <laughs> with uh doesn't that frankie Pee-wee avalon in it? frankie avalon um uh, annette funicello mm, yeah bob denver yeah. um alan hayes jr uh the skipper fucking dick dale and the dale tones Stevie Ray, motherfucking Vaughn. Hell yeah. Pee Wee Herman. That's right. Paul Rubens. Um, oh my God. Um, uh, the woman that married Uncle Jesse. Um, she's in it. Oh, the uh, one that like went to jail for paying off her kids' yeah, stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, weird. I can't think of her name, but. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is her. Holy <laughs> shit. Um, or paying to get her kids into college, I guess, is what it was. Right, yeah. right. And the star of that show is is the uh, is really the kid, their punk rock kid. Yeah, just yeah. Some of the lines that he has in it are just like fucking perfect, right? Absolutely. That was such a campy movie, but it was a it wasn't a remake with these people, you know, trying well, to redo it, it. No, but it was a riff off all those exactly. beach movies from the yeah. '60s and '50s. They brought it in there, yeah. play little Beach Boys, and then they have fucking. Cayuna stomp, dun, 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 dun. you know, and they yeah, had a yeah. fucking pajama party in it, man, for Absolutely. real. For I sure. mean, it was just like, what the fuck am I watching, right? But I loved it. Absolutely. I loved every part of it. And it was like, that's respect, you know, in a way, because they just did what a, oh yeah, it was the Jamaica sky, dun, 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 dun. it was like fishbone playing and yeah, shit. Yeah. It was, it was like really cool. And, Instead of doing shit like that, they're like, hey, let's redo Alien. Yeah. I got a great idea. Let's make the same movie we made 15 times. A Star is Born. <laughs> Again. <laughs> the Postman Rings twice. <laughs> Again. The Postman Rings thrice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, but I, I mean, that, that was the kind of a thing that we got to see in the 80s was that revisions. Sure. Um, kind of, the kind of bringing that shit back and, and showing the nostalgia, the care for it. Right. You know? Don't get me wrong. There's movies that are remakes that are my favorite 
versions of those movies. Yeah. Uh, right off the top, Little Shop of Horrors. One hundred percent. Um, and then the thing, mm-hmm. the fly, the fly. That's another uh, great one. Not of the living dead. And so I'm not saying you can't redo those, but you have to, at the very least, like what's happening right now. You got to choose it right. Not, yeah, and it, it, you can't, everything can't be a fucking remake, dude. No. Like people's nostalgia, their member berries are fucking <laughs> shriveling. You know what I mean? Like there's fucking, too many of them, too many fucking member berries. That means you can't feed <laughs> the fucking trunk, bro. Yes. <laughs> it's so fucking nuts, dude. Yeah. There is a wealth of ideas. In, in, I mean, it's just like you could stumble upon a fucking creepazoids and make a fucking badass movie with it. That's right. You know, if w- given the right reboot, what the fuck? I would love if I worked like if I could work for Marvel, like to make and not Mar- Marvel movies, right? The cinematic portion, right? Or or even this the show, right? Uh, the shows on Disney Plus. I would love that they would give, not me. But they could, and I'd be good at it. Um, but younger directors, right, or budding directors, um, and screenwriters, right, and just like I want you to come with ideas. Here's the Marvel universe. Here's all the comics. What do you got? You tell me what you have. Damn. Because how fun would that be, dude? Yeah. There's so many, like, micro stories that could you could grow, you know what I mean? Like, in different ways. Like, yeah, to make you it... Pick up, you pick up a Daredevil piece of that, right? Right. There's so many good pieces. Right. There's so many good runs. There's so many good years. Right. A 12-issue series, if, if a writer and a creative team kept it up for an entire year, Generally, that's fucking badass, yeah. and that is a gold mine of material that you can say, "Hey." But you have to we... have somebody that can flush it out to make it a show, right? right. It's not going to be a beat for beat. It can't be, or it would be fucking thirty minutes long. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and I'm cool with that. I'm cool, but you have to find the right people to do that. Yep. And so that's what I think I would be more interested in is, um, hey, I saw you did a run on this show as the director or whatever. I like the way you use the lighting. I like the way you did this. Um, I'm going to pair you with, first of all, what are your ideas? You know, right. Do you have something in mind? But I'm also going to pair you with this screenwriter who wrote this and this and this for this independent movie and for this TV show, whatever. Right. And, like, get people together and make them fucking, make sure they gel. You know what I mean? And, yeah. like, hey. Let's to, build something. You guys work together for the next few months to build an idea together. All right. And you bring us back these ideas, and if we take them, you know, we'll pay you something just to, for the work. Don't get me wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? But not like... Why the fuck yeah. not? But then also, I mean, with a creative team like that, it, it's like it's like Cheers. It's, it's fucking Night Court. It's those people that were on those shows right. that grew as a family. For one, they knew they could trust their actors with the material that they were giving them, which is a fucking really heavy-duty thing. And then there's some... TV shows now, I guess, um, that are the more serious ones that like l- these these movie actors are really jumping into and saying, OK, we're going to apply, you know, pretty much everything to these these cinematic um, TV shows. Right. You know, and, and it's going to really catch because that's what people wanted to see, you know, especially with streaming and in the world we're kind of living in. It's a good pivot for right. a lot of actors, but having a creative team that could literally sit around and just say, Hey, we're going to play with this for a little bit. Well, and just think, think about this. Okay. So Brock, we'll, we'll, we'll pretend that we're those people. Okay. So we've, uh, you know, we're thinking of adapting this sort of a story. Um, we're going to make some tweaks. Here's what we're thinking. Um, we think we can do it for $30 million. Well, how much? $30 million. Depends on this kind of story you're telling, right? Right. There's such a rich amount of stories that are out there. You know what I'm saying? Just give give it a shot. Yeah. Give something. And here's the the thing is at the end, if you, you know, you're liking the story idea and maybe you want better production value, we're $30 million in. How much do you spend on a movie normally? You know what I mean? So, like, you still have something salvageable there that you can make something out of. Well... But you're, they're going to get their hands on it before that gets down right. the rabbit hole too far. But you know what I'm yeah. saying. If you did have a roundtable of yeah. creatives, right? Yeah. And you said, okay, so who? what's your dream story? You know what I mean? Like, what 
what what story um off the top of your head right now would you want to invest in right you know um which would be fucking cool as shit Absolutely. you know like what would you what would you pick like as far as the storyline goes mini long graphic novel you know 36 issues whatever if is there a storyline to you that kind of like i don't know makes you want to make that somehow mm. I don't think it's anything off the top of my head. Like, there's all kinds of stories I'd want to do. Don't get me wrong. But, like, what I would want to think about is how how am I going to film it, right? Right. How, what would that look like on film? You know what I mean? As, as opposed to, you know, is there going to be a lot of CGI involved? Yeah. You know, because I, I would probably in the beginning stay away from those stories. Now, once you make something and it's, like, commercially successful... Now we're going to move you up the ranks to make some of these, you know, movies that we're going to spend a half a billion dollars on or whatever the fuck right, they do, right. you know? Or you or can you never get there. And that'd you, be cool yeah, too. Where <laughs> yeah. you do a, a six episode series yeah, for yeah. an origin story and then release a movie. Sure. You know, like I, I can think of a couple like right off the top of my head, just, just like Spectre. Which they right, announced sure. a little bit. It was like Nicolas Cage as a Spectre or something. I oh, read something I didn't about see it. that. Yeah. I was like, why the fuck not? He yeah, could be that's Jim cool. Corgan. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. He could literally be that that fucking asshole cop, you know? Um, but I I think the 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 first twelve issues of the Spectre series from the eighties into the nineties, mm-hmm. that would make one hell of a fucking tv show sure like a netflix show or a a scary disney whatever you know it would just be fucking badass because of the cg and then the imagery that you could do but you could tie it to religion and you can show you could show growth in character you could show just like fucking savagery and in other characters but that's what that was like a turning point for i think a lot of comics and i and i like that and i don't think that we've gotten we've gotten the um the r-rated everything now sure but what what a lot of people now just like when we were younger readers you mature up to different kind of subjects right so you find these things and you're like damn you know um so i think now we're to the point in the movies that that can that can happen yeah you know it can get a little bit grittier than the dark knight you know yeah it's like oh cool cool you know let me uh, tell you, I got these cars. <laughs> right, I watched that the other night. Great movie. Oh, it's a great movie, dude, for sure. Uh, one Not of, hating. One of the best. Yeah, is. one of the best. But it's like, okay, now that at the time was revolutionary because yeah. it was gritty. Yeah. You know, it was just like you know the revolutionary first Batman. You know, all of the other shit. But it's like, I think there is a wealth of you could have a max line of movies. Oh, for you know sure. What I mean? You could do a, a Marvel Cinema's Max, right, and do like. Yelena Belova story. Right. You know, um, you could do, there are so many good stories that would really kind of fit in today's world. Do you think the Daredevil Born Again will actually be the story from Daredevil Born Again? No, they probably just cleverly use the title. That's kind of what I think. <laughs> it's like the shitty I'm Beatles. Like, <laughs> the reason I say that is like, I mean, that would be a story I'd want to do. But you have to have, you have to have Daredevil the hero before you can have that story. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you have to show that that downright just in the gutter fucking Daredevil. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that. We have, but I don't think we've seen it in that fucking like desperation kind of a way. Right, sure, maybe a little bit with Ben Ben Affleck's, but. Uh, he yeah. was just a poser you know what i mean <laughs> he was like literally just posing on shit <laughs> he was like oh i'm gonna pose on this one i'm sure that wasn't his fault no, sure. no of course not <laughs> i'm sure the director's like okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, daredevil was another movie to revisit but it's still just not great no no it just didn't have it you know you, you watched had... the director's cut maybe I have. I don't remember what the difference was. I tried to watch Electra until I got. Oh, I'm so sorry. Bring me to life. Wake me up. Wake me up inside. Wake up. Yeah, that movie movie was not good. 
Do you know how many little Marvel movies there were before the MCU happened? <laughs> and I've watched Elektra once. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like X-Men 3, the Brett Ratner oh, version. Oh. Jesus Christ. That's gross. He rush houred that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's a movie I tried to watch a second time, and I'm like, no, it's as terrible as it was the first time I I've, watched it. I've watched it 10, yeah. 20, 30 times. Yeah, probably just know. a couple times for me. <laughs> X2 and the first one I watched multiple times. X2 was the ultimate. Still is probably one of the best comic book movies. It was um, good, for just, sure. Uh, by all means. It just had a lot of really cool shit. It could have done more like we see now, but they didn't. They did what they They did what they did with what they had <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll tell you that like you know for every you know the, for everybody shitting on x-men origins wolverine um two-thirds of that movie are badass yeah yeah <laughs> two-thirds of that movie are fucking badass Liv schreiber's badass as saber tooth you know what i mean i liked all of that yeah and then even even yeah. john houston is striker yeah yeah um fucking holy shit you know what i mean that was a good choice he's a great actor absolutely um and then even ryan reynolds is fucking dead wade wilson right before he was deadpool yeah yeah. which was interesting and that was cool and then they were like haha take this we fucked everything up yep (laughs) yep they're like oh not a finisher what the fuck and then we get the wolverine which was like incredible still is great that's good um, it's, it's the graphic novel, you know what I mean? Of, of the continuity. Yeah. Pretty you know? straightforward. Yeah. It was, it was, it was that Frank Miller run, yeah. which is so cool. That was one of the very first graphic novels I ever owned. And it was one of the sure. first that they kind of started making after, um, what was it? Watchmen and shit. Cause when they collected Watchmen, that was one of the first. Then I had like death in the family. Yeah. Um, I still got an old one of that one. Same. Yeah. I like the smell of it. I'm like, <laughs> mm, uh, I love old, old comic book smell. Yeah. You know? that, God damn, that smell is like, it reminds you of being in an old bookstore, you know, wooden floors, like an old West store. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember the, those fucking places like that. You walk in, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, hey, I'm going to go look at your comics. Cool. It's dirty. <laughs> but that, that was, I, that's the memories of like comic books for me and there that's that's the same kind of like memories with these movies i wish these kids have because yeah. comic books they're really destroying the industry in a way that there's so many good books but there's so many goddamn different ways you know that they present them and shit like that right you're you're not you're creating this there's 94 variant co- yeah covers creating an unnecessary market yeah i think it's great but why <laughs> we don't need 14 different fucking number one issues right maybe that's the only one you do because i remember back in um whenever they were doing the heroes reborn the first issue had like three or four different variants right you had like a gold version of each one of them with gatefold cover and stuff and then you had another one that uh they usually would have like one or two uh, variants for one issue number one and issue number two like I know they did with Captain America, sure. Which they had two number twos, and there's there's a couple from the early run that were a little bit harder to find. But there's a yeah, like nowadays, like honestly, dude, there's like sixteen, sixteen variant covers for like issue six. Right. You're like, what are you doing? I I thought <laughs> the, the Ross covers, mm-hmm. which were cover A for Immortal Hulk, were the greatest covers. Of course. You know? Come on, and and the alternates. Nothing. <laughs> I, <laughs> I buy. Compare. Don't get me wrong. If I see an alternate and I really like the cover, I might buy it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If the cover is cool. Yeah. 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 There's a, there's a couple that I regret but passing I don't, on. I don't do it because I mean, value or anything like that. And that's again, that's where this market broke the first time. You know, was false um, expectations. Ooh, and that might be where the movie industry is going with that <clears> shit. <throat> Could be, could be. Uh, imagine, imagine a full moon feature Marvel project. <laughs> It'd be like fucking Howard the Duck or some yeah. shit like that, you know? Yeah. Astro the fucking dog or something. You know, go back to your question earlier. Like off, like off the dome when you first said that. Like I really like to do something like more Midnight Sunsy. 
Yeah. You know, um, maybe not exactly that, but something close to that. You know what I mean? Like that dark side. That's one thing that hasn't been explored too much. In, right. I well, think and I think we're Marvel? getting, like, yeah. we're getting Agatha all along in September. And, and I'm down to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that side of the world. I'd love the special presentation of Werewolf by Night, obviously. That was a shame. You know, yeah. so I would love to see more of that that style stuff. Like, I would love to see, again, I know the Blade's been on hold for seven years or something now. Yeah. Um, but uh, a Ghost Rider again, you know, something like that. But I think, back to that scenario, though, I think I'd want, for an initial story, I wouldn't want to do Ghost Rider. I would want to do something where I could show more personal I think the best part about comic book s- stories, right? Depending. Think about, yeah, think yeah. about the most successful comic book stores, stories. Mm-hmm. Or not stories, even characters. Um, Spider-Man. Right. The reason people like Spider-Man is because they could identify with him. They could relate to In him. some way, I'm lesser than those around me because of self-esteem. Right. Right? Yeah, but I'm just I, an I average have, dude. And I have all these, these fucking extraordinary powers that I can't really show off. Right. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that that's, that's where you really would hook people, you know, into a story. Like, I want it to be character-driven. Relatable. I want it to be relatable characters. Like, And that's, I think, the hardest part with, like, a Superman or an Aquaman or somebody. Um, and traditional Aquaman, not like God, Jason Momoa. God-like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the upside is, you know, Superman learns from regular humans how to be empathetic and all the things. But at the end of the day, you're fucking Superman. Yeah. Your one weakness is kryptonite? Fuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what so I mean? You got a fear? Yeah. You Jeez. know? <laughs> what, do you, what do you really, you know? Yeah. Like, it's hard to relate to that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I but, think it's a, a best. But you champion of course. the idea of the perfect man or the, well, the perfect perf- soldier. You the, know? And not even that, but perfect to the point where even though he has all that power you hope that you'll be that way if you had all that power which is probably unlikely for most folks let's be real um <laughs> give me the power of superman i'm robin bates <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you, you know again power corrupts yeah yeah and money cr- corrupts absolutely <laughs> no i i let me do a brother voodoo show dude that come would be on cool, i'd be right? down I, Give I would me a like special see, presentation. Yeah, I would like to see more Ulysses Bloodstone. Yeah. I, I would love to see... I'd even more Elsa Bloodstone. But I'll tell you what, I would love to do... Here's what I would do. This is it right here. It would be a Brother Voodoo special presentation, show, whatever you want to give me. I don't even go shit. All right. But the whole story would be... Because that's actually a pretty cool story about him and his brother Daniel, and he died in spirits and blah, 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 whatever. So you tell that story... And at the end of it, our Doctor Strange in the world is, like, too ubiquitous, right? Like, he is, he's out there. He's doing all the things. He's beyond. Yeah. yeah he's beyond it. Now. Have him be the one that pulls the Midnight Suns together. He's actually been the Sorcerer Supreme before. Mm-hmm. So. Right, 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 right. That's where I would go with it. And then that would be the ending of that movie. Of his movie is him, some like pulling out the deck and summoning those guys. Yeah, looking for those and like you say, you do have a Nick Cage come in and a Danny Catch take over. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you could do that. Well, you could you could even if you did a show like like that, right? You could have Danny Catch be the guy, the, your ghostwriter, mm-hmm. and then Johnny Blaze shows up, and then not till later do you even find and Johnny Blaze I'm talking about where he's no longer the ghostwriter he's got that ends up with the gun that can shoot fucking hellfire yeah the long hair yeah yeah <laughs> and, and you find out they're brothers down yeah. you know like you that could all be backstory yeah why the fuck not there was Let's there's go. a treasure trove of information to pull from that was know? 20 minutes of thinking about it while I was doing something else right you know what i mean that's what i'm saying it's like, so easy it's so easy. and there's there again they're just you could pull up a run and, and find that in almost anything. And then they invest in, you know, the bullshit that doesn't do anything. And then they stop. Well, and I think a lot of times they waste characters, too. Shit. Like Crossbones would have been like a cool character to have around for a while. Jesus Christ, yes. Um, You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of those characters. Like Ultron. Yeah. Like that was a really quick ending for an Ultron. It was. It, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, he... he 
he blew his load too quick. You know what I mean? But I mean, that's like almost all the characters. Let's be real. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, in first appearances and shit, you know, for most of them, if they did a three or four story arc, yeah, yeah, they had to come back like two years later, right? You know, well, even even like the Red Skull, you know, like yeah, how many stories? Like, don't get me wrong, like you can take some of those stories and move them around to make it fit your narrative. That's okay. I'm okay with that, and I've never have been mad about that in the MCU. Like, you know, who wouldn't just like the comic? No, but when you make something shitty like from a good comic and make it shitty like Thor 4. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm like, that's Gore the God Butcher and you mm, fucked it up. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, that's such a cool fucking movie but then it's it's like, it's the power of love. Dun, 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 I, 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 I don't know that I ever at any point watching that movie thought it was a cool movie. I'm going to be like honest it. with you. I was like, yeah. this is the this is the Wonder Woman 84 of the Marvel Universe. It really did. It really did. I'm like, did what it. the fuck is happening right now? The, uh, Taika Waititi and his whole team, which is great, it's getting a little worn. Um, it's getting a little worn around the edges, um, and I think it's at its pinnacle right now. Yeah, with Time Bandits, because I mean he's done you know Our Flag Means Death, um, what we do in the shadows, fucking all the those two Thor movies, which Thor three was just like incredible. You're like holy shit, what a movie, right? What a way, what a way to change it with the comedy, you know? Yeah, their brand of humor and the way that they he does his dialogue and his characters and everything like that, they are so like. Out of time. Yeah. Wherever time you're at, right? Sure. Um, which everybody relates to. is like, you know, Zeus. He's like, a flick. <laughs> you know? You're just like, uh-huh. that's a funny fucking character. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and it really did change a lot of shit. But then it did, it, I, again, like I said, I think it reached its pinnacle. And I think it's reaching its pinnacle television-wise with the new Time Bandits. Um, because that show is really good. But it's the same humor. It's right. the same things that we've seen for the past, I don't know, seven years now. Um, and if you go back to uh, what we do in the shadows, probably 10, right. 12 years. I'm sure. Uh, that he's been pretty much on top. But he had a, you know, a great career with Eagle vs. Shark, one of his very first movies. And Jermaine Clement, Clement is in this. Yeah. So it was a lot of people that he's worked with, which is awesome. Sure. So it, there's a... Uh, Jermaine, he's playing the uh, ultimate evil dude, right? Oh, okay, nice. And uh, I could see that his his uh, manservant or whatnot is named Damon, <laughs> but yet yeah, there's a demon sitting on a uh, like a rock in front of him. He's got like an eyeball in his forehead. You know how weird it looked. But yeah, this yeah. is a little bit more focused than the actual movie, you know. And he's like, "Where's Damon?" <laughs> and, mm. and the demon's like, Rrr. "He's like, no, not Damon. <laughs> I said Damon." <laughs> it's so funny. I definitely funny. want to check that out. I enjoy the movie Time Bandits. Oh a lot. man, the movie was that was an Eric Idle movie, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it was Eric Idle and uh, what's his nuts, uh, Terry Gilliam. Yeah, Terry um, Gilliam. They get they get credits on that too. Yeah, they get the slow credit. You know what I mean? Okay, they get the credit that pops up right after the ending, and it's like slow. Boom! And the rest of them are like tick 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 tick. You know what I mean? They Love get it. they get two seconds. Um, but no, no, no. This is cool because they do they do visit these time periods and and they're they're showing us this history that we don't know about. This is what they did with this. Our flag means death. Okay. It was basically about Blackbeard, but we don't really know the story. And in the the little uh, the dandy that became a pirate mm-hmm. um, is a real guy. And and it was rumored that they were gay, that they were they lovers or they loved really? each other or something like that. Yes, yeah, yeah. So you don't really know about this, and they sure. do this, they do the same thing in this TV show. So they're bringing things to light, like the richest man ever. Right, you got to watch it. He, okay. The the richest man to ever have lived. Right, they visit that dude. Um, they go to Harlem in the twenties. You know, in the moonshine business. Okay. Um, and they're just like they're, I mean, there's Fidget and, you know, it's all the same kind of characters. And one dude looks like Will Ferrell with a, <laughs> with a fucking fake nose. And I look at him, I'm like, Will Ferrell's in this? No shit. But this dude's a Swedish guy, probably same fucking height, same build, same fucking curly hair, whatever. But he looks just like him in the eyes. And, I, and Amy can't see it. 
I'm like, do you not see that that's <laughs> fucking him? I mean, it's it's a doppelganger type of a situation. Wow. Um, but it's fucking great. Yeah, man. You I'll know, check it out for sure. Yeah. And you said you don't know what channel it's on or anything? No, I don't. No, <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I, I I I asked Amy that last night. I was like, we don't even know what channel fucking <laughs> Time Bandits is on, do we? Uh, <laughs> just shows up on Up Next. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's really good. The the effects are really great in it. The storyline's really cool. Um it's a it's a typical kind of I don't know, it's like a almost kind of like just like the movie how it was just so fucking weird, you know? Sure. Turning in people into weird shit and and there's more of the supreme being in it. You know, there's more God in it. And it's sure. Taika Waititi, right? Okay. So he's always making jokes Makes and sense. making the people around him laugh. He's like, ha ha. He's like, maybe. A, and he says something quippy. And then nobody laughs. And he's like, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. <laughs> and they like they have to laugh. Lisa Kudrow's in it? Yeah, yeah. I don't mind it. <laughs> She's basically kind of like a. a it's Apple TV is what it's on. Oh, that's yeah. that what it is? Apple TV Plus. Ah, that's why it yeah. shows up on the next. Yeah. It's it's a good show. It's funny. Thanks. I'll check it out for so, sure. Yeah, you get to learn about the history, and they don't shy away from the history, but they don't also like <clears throat> gloss over it. Nice. Know? It's and they introduce it in great ways, and the characters are like fucking funny as shit. the The Kevin that they chose is fucking awesome. Nice. You know? um, they do have um, little people in it, uh, but they're part they're part of a different division. Instead of what they were in the original Time Bandits. Okay. They were all like, and in the original Time Bandits, they were like gardeners. Right. They created flowers and shit, right? Sure. And um, what does he say? We created the most foul smelling flower you ever uh. smelled. And then they banished us. <laughs> uh, so it's like the same characters. And they did a couple of the same moves, which was awesome. Being in Kevin's room. You, whenever they're whenever they were in the original movie and they were running from the light, you know, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, oh, like one dude was like, like moving his head and shit with it. They did the same thing. And I was like, that's fucking funny. Absolutely. You know, um, yeah, they've been to a lot of different places. It's just even the opening titles are really good, too. Nice. That's one thing that I'm seeing on on Apple TV. They have the best fucking opening titles of any fucking anything. Right on. They're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, boy, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to stop for a question, Brock. Let's do it. We're doing a 40th anniversary question. Okay. So what you have in front of you is a TV guide game from 1984. <laughs> so we're each going to ask each other a question off this. Just one? Just Yeah, we'll, let's start there. Let's see we'll see how, how it goes. goes. <laughs> oh, I had to cut this game open because it was still, still sealed. This is brand new? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's the first time somebody's getting to read this since 1984 yeah absolutely maybe 83 who Whoa, knows shit. <laughs> uh, yeah again so this is a tv guide tv game with over 6,000 tv trivia questions from 1984 and uh, my tv guide question book has miss piggy in a pink floaty chair Watching TV, <laughs> fucking rules in a pool. I got Princess Di and um, Prince what Charles, King Charles now. Yeah, the royal wedding. Mm -hmm. What it means uh, to us uh, doesn't mean a goddamn thing. <laughs> we we'll just leave that one alone. Uh, <laughs> all right, are we ready for some questions, Mike? Let's friend? go now. Now you got to think. This is all of the relevant movie television. Pop culture trivia up until 1984. So some of these questions are going to only pertain to old shit. <laughs> yeah, oh, the, all of them are only yes. going to pertain to old shit um, for the most part. <laughs> okay, I got one for you. All right. What's the name of the rock group in 1979's The Muppet Movie? Oh, The Muppet Rock Group? Mm -hmm. What was the uh, name okay. of the rock group in 1979's The Muppet Movie? I don't know. Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. That's right. That's right. So, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want us to play a song? I, I could see all the characters, but I couldn't remember the names. 
<laughs> at all. At all. The cast of this 1981 movie includes Farrah Fawcett, Dean Martin, and Burt Reynolds. Woo! I don't know. The Cannonball Run. Ah, see, I wasn't into those, huh? <laughs> yeah. Damn. Damn. Was that one that you knew? Um, I don't know if I would have got there. Like, I know that's a Burt Reynolds movie, and I remember watching Cannonball Run Run 1 and 2. Um, but I don't know that I would have got there based off Farrah Fawcett being in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Farrah Fawcett. Mm-hmm. I was like, what was she in? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I got another one for you. If you're ready and while you're still looking. Ready? Yes. Name the Edinburgh-born actor who made his U.S. screen debut in Walt Disney's Darby O'Gill and the Little People in 1959. This one I actually knew. Mickey Dolenz? <laughs> Sean Connery. Holy shit! Yep. I had to pick a monkey, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's this one. Okay. Uh, Al Pacino stars in this. This is a softball pitch. Okay. Okay. Um, so Al Pacino stars in this 1975 movie about a man who robs a bank to pay for his lover's sex change operation. It's a softball pitch, man. You don't know the Attica, Attica, Dog Day Afternoon. Oh yeah, shit! <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen Dog Day Afternoon, my friend. Yeah, well, that's why. Like. To me, well, I would have been like, "Holy shit, Dog Day!" <laughs> well, here's here's a, a a true softball pitch. You ready? They might have called this 1981 film a U.S. lycanthrope in Great Britain, but its real title is... American Werewolf in London. Yeah. That's a fucking softball pitch. Yes, that that, that is. (laughs) That's a meatball right over the plate. Come on. As uh, as explained to me by Tony Danza on Who's the Boss. Oh, here's, here's a good one. Max is a frazzled air traffic controller with telekinetic powers in 1981's Modern Problems. Who plays Max? Chevy Chase. Oh, we, yeah. Haven't we even done that movie? No, no, no. no. We, we thought about we, it. I think we talked about it, yeah. yeah even because he goes through the whole fucking like cocaine shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, that was him in real life. <laughs> <laughs> the Shadow Riders, 1982, are Texas brothers. One is Tom Selleck. Who is the other? Um, Sam Elliott. Beef, it's what's for dinner. <laughs> yes, am I, I right? Like, you are 100% Holy right. Holy fucking shit. Like, who else would you pick for that shit? You just That's perfect, pick, dude. You just got to pick 80s Quigley Down Under. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Okay, who plays the thief who plans to rob an entire luxury apartment building in the Anderson Tapes from 1971? I've never even heard of the Anderson <laughs> Tapes. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sean there's so many really good dude, ones. It's just crazy, dude. I'm just like looking oh. in the movie ones right now. But who's James Bond in in '69's On Her Majesty's Secret Service? '69. Mm-hmm. He was a one timer. Yeah. Oh, I don't know his name, dude. I'm not Lazy that big of a Bond. Yeah, George Lazy. Yeah. He was the one. He was the only one. I'm not. I'm not a big Bond guy. Not not enough to know that guy's name. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was one thing that uh, that. I think I learned a long time ago just because it was a crapper fact. I was like, oh, yeah, I can recall that. <laughs> <laughs> name the, oh, this is sort of that question. Uh, name the John Steinbeck hero portrayed by Henry Fonda in 1940s, The Grapes of Wrath. Oh, fucking. Or, conversely, you can answer, like, by answering the question of, who was Rage Against the Machines the ghost of? <laughs> Tom Jones. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I've seen The Grapes of Wrath yeah, yeah, a couple of, of times. Um, I was like, well, even that, I mean, like, we had to read that in high school. Yeah. You yeah. know, like. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think we had to read a lot of John Stanback or anything. No? Yeah. He's the blind man in Young Frankenstein. Blind man in Young Frankenstein. Yeah, Gene Hackman. Hackman. <laughs> Hackman. Yeah, I think, boy, I need to bone up on my 1984. 
And that was weird because like the first question, so secretly we asked each other each one question based off these little cards that are in this earlier. Uh-huh. And, or maybe it was out of the books, the other, the, when we first opened the books, but I got the the first question right. <laughs> like right off the bat i was like yeah. look at me go this will be easy <laughs> yeah and then it wasn't and even some stuff i felt like i probably should know <laughs> yeah i know right I'm like, i was oh, looking my at my brain's like, not ready for this i should fucking know this shit <laughs> yeah there's so fucking much uh the kids section that would be good for us right there oh i didn't even think about that um oh uh-huh, maybe oh that's some old ass shit bro who the fuck is Chester the pup? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me either. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> Who played Captain Nemo in Walt Disney's Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea? James Mason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what? 1983 CBS Saturday morning cartoon series introduced the voices of voices and likenesses of the primetime residents of Hazard County. The Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, that <laughs> cartoon. I'm like, holy shit. I don't even remember that. All right. That's enough. No Man. more questions. Yeah, I know. Because I could sit and look at that book all day. Yeah, I know. I could, I could read it in an afternoon. <laughs> And then be like useless in this game. Be like I remember that shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cheat right there. Is you get the cards first, and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I read them on the toilet. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I just read through them. I don't know why, but now I know every answer to the blockbuster game. <laughs> I did. I did have a. Uh, Blockbuster games um, and a Rolling Stones trivia. Oh yeah, um, but it was the Rolling Stone uh, magazine. It was one of those. It was pretty fun, but yeah, I cleaned house uh, because it was more current shit. So right. it was probably like ninety one all the way up, and then the few older stuff that had in it, I was like, low hanging fruit. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I'm gonna use that corporate term for everything. That's easy. <laughs> well, it's fucking low hanging fruit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Guys, why don't we go after the little hanging fruit? Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's put a pin in this, and we'll circle back around. <laughs> That's basically code for I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> let's well, let's let's give it some time. What? All right. Well, let it breathe. Um, <laughs> yeah. Make sure uh, you get me a TPS report on my desk by Friday. Um, let's go do lunch. Yeah. Oh, I'm late for my racquetball game. <laughs> it's pickleball time. So is pickleball uh, the new corporate sport? Pickleball? Yeah, is that like the like is that the racquetball of the eighties? <laughs> <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm gonna go play racquetball. Shit. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the town club. <laughs> they all look the same. Yeah, absolutely. They're all like fucking metal buildings and shit. I'm go <laughs> swimming. Yay. Um, so we are the Drop Culture Podcast. Yes, we are. This is the greatest podcast in Colorado history. History. Yep. Yes. Um, yeah. Greatest podcast ever in Colorado. And uh, you can reach us on dropculture.com. Mm-hmm. You can reach us at uh, dropculturepodcast at gmail.com. Also true. Yeah. If you want to send us one of those electronic maily things, just don't spam us, please. Yeah. 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 I don't want to, you don't want to buy my house, you know, so fuck off. I'm not going to drive a sun kissed van for you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, check us out. We're everywhere. Like I said, we're the greatest. So it's not hard to find us. Yeah. Anywhere drop culture is sold. Um, Facebook talked about shit. You can't get it off the lips of, of everybody's mouth in Colorado. Drop culture. That's right. Like and subscribe. Drop culture. All those things. And you never have to listen, but always download. Yeah. 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 Just collect them. Yeah. Because like, it would be great because you're going to have a time when you're like, man, I wish I had something. Oh, yeah. wait. Wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. Just think, you could be the one person that is broadcasting Drop Culture Podcast episodes after the bomb drops. You could fact, be the only one. Fact. Instead of just one song, you know, you could play all of our episodes. Just got to download them. That's right. You know, um, make sure you have access. So <laughs> until next time, kids. Peace. Later.